excellent roamers themselves when on defense. So I, I don't know that it's going to be an inherent advantage to, to either team, but uh, it will definitely show us some different styles of play. I would imagine that here, Mouse Sports is going to be starting on defense first and foremost. They're going to ban Lion yet again. Yep. Not a stranger to see him. An operator that's, let's be honest, he's uh, he's very powerful. He's uh, he's probably you, you, one of the most powerful operators in the entire game, if not the most powerful operator in the other game in yeah. the entire game you, right now. You can safely call him overpowered. I think that's that's a, that's a pretty safe thing to say. Uh, Ying as well, a very commonly banned operator on attack. Um, these are the type of operators that put you in a position to just win if you time it right. Yes. Um, and there's very little usually the defense can do to stop you when if you if you time it right. So. That's why you see them banned out, usually. You can see a little bit of uh, contemplation here from Cloud9, considering what they want to get rid of on defense. Odd to see, you don't, you don't often have it where a team will take it all the way to zero. They will be the ones to ban out Maestro. So, I mean, I mean it, worked for, it worked in their favor, but they also happen to be a team who I think their Maestro play is superior to Mouse's. That... Mm. On face value, I think that hurts Cloud9 more than it hurts Mouse, unless there's something we don't know about this map in particular. Well, Echo also going to go. I That's mean, not a surprise. If we're, if we're thinking about basement defense, then Maestro and Echo are two of the most powerful operators on this map in particular. Mira also very good, but I would rather have a Maestro or an Echo any day of the week while, attack, while, while defending the basement, because the attack almost always comes from the server. You need that indirect denial. You need it, need it, need it. And while Mira gives you the knowledge that they're planting default, you cannot directly indirect. That sounds so weird, but you cannot directly <laughs> indirectly deny the diffuse plant, except for by the use of your C4, which is somewhat the same. But I, again, I'd rather just have an evil eye, man. It's it's a lot it's a lot easier to uh, do things like deny thermite charges in server in the first place. You know, you can add layers to your defense, and I think it's a smart ban. As much as you you, you might be right, it could possibly hurt Cloud Nine more than it hurts uh, Mouse. We see the pulse will remain unbanned this time yeah, around. I think that'll aid both these teams, teams and immediately Beastly game. will go on to the pulse. Mm. And, and I mean the way that the way that Beastly plays the pulse is far less of a fragging operator and just way more of a surveillance operator. That's it. I mean, well, that's pulse, how you're supposed pulse. to. Right. I know, but I mean, certain teams will use pulse more aggressively, and other teams will use him deep in sight to give the anchors and possibly support players that information. It really yeah. depends on the team strap. I think a little bit of clarification there. That's how you're supposed to use pulse on bank. There are certain situations where you need to be playing pulse, like for example, on organ. If you're gonna roam pulse on organ, he's he's more of a fracker. You know, you're gonna put him. You're defending the top floor. You're gonna put him in the basement, and he needs to he needs to do some damage. He needs to make some make some hurt happen. Yeah. Um, whereas on bank basement defense, you're putting him in vault, and he's he's staring at server, and he's just gathering information. That is his job. And then eventually, what he needs to do as well is uh, deny the diffuse plant using his C4. But that comes much much later. And before that. Again, it just comes down to uh, gather information. So, Drone ready. here we go. Roam clear for Cloud9. And they're looking to clear out stock before they start anything else happening. Now, it's going to be, as as such, uh, a top-down for Cloud9. This is definitely the right call. Um, I can, you know, It's obvious that uh, they're making it based on their opponents. Mouse Sports, we talked about it before, like to roam. And uh, Cloud9 are going to need to isolate those roamers. Need to force them all down before they can make an actual concerted effort into the site. I wonder what's driven this change for Cloud9 on on the way that they attack with Retro being the Jackal now instead of using him on the Blackbeard. I mean, I, I know that Blackbeard is not exactly all that common here on this map, especially the site defending or attacking downstairs. Mm. But... Foxy's a pretty darn good jackal. You've got him on a secondary heart breacher role right now. I, I think that's very interesting as to the way that they've they've changed some things here. Well, I mean, it worked worked out decently for them on the on the first map, but it is it is definitely a change. I think probably just uh, something to do with personal preferences. We always like to talk about it. It's an internal thing for uh, for Cloud Nine. Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm gonna start opening up those uh, drop downs. Cloud9 will use the Thermite to do that. Kind of interesting. Usually you'd have the Habana 
with the Excaros to open up the drops, and Thermite would go over to server to open up that main wall into the uh, site, but not so here for Cloud9. They still have one exothermic charge. Habana actually kind of exposed right now. Fox A potentially not getting calls about Kuiper's proximity to him. Um, but somebody needs to keep their barrel pointed at the Ella, otherwise you could expect a push from Hyper. Yeah, I mean, both Fox A and Retro are in positions now where a rotate from Mouse might be caught, but I think they looked the wrong way trying to find the Jaeger who was playing down by that server stack, and the Jackal's going to let him go, even though Retro did have the pings. Unfortunately for them, Vertical is going to get away. Meanwhile, the only member of Mouse who's taken any damage right now is Beastly. Ella has fallen off of the server stairs, and... We'll sit with Beastly just over by the vault entrance. It's Fox A pushing down. There's very limited time at the moment. Yeah, it was a great call for Mouse to fall everybody back to site in the last 30 seconds. They had control of the server, but they decided to forfeit it because they knew it was the right decision. You can see Mark has gotten it down inside of Garage, but look at how little time there is. Gas canisters and smoke canisters alike going down to try and deny and cover the diffuse plant. Cloud9 getting quite a lot of kills thanks to Laxing looking through those smokes. And the cover is proper as Cloud9 will get the final kill despite being in a poor position to win the round. They managed to make it happen. Yeah, that was a flawless round, and uh, I think the real spearhead to that was Laxing's play, being able to see through the smoke, giving great coverage to Goddess as she went for the plant. Not just not just that this is a good C9 map, this tends to be a very good Laxing and Goddess map for them. You know, and, and they've had a lot of success here in the various teams that they've played upon. So, I mean, it doesn't surprise me to see them working well in tandem with one another, especially when you've got Glass to see through the smoke. That's very, very powerful pushing ability certainly is. Laxing did a lot seeing through those smokes. Um, if it weren't for him in that round, it probably would have been a little bit less one-sided. But uh, the one thing to note is that while the round was one-sided when the actual ac the action started, it also started okay, with 20 to 25 seconds bomb, left, yes. which, is, which is really bad to see from Cloud9. They did win that but it does not bode well for the future. You saw Mouse were holding onto server for so long, and they fell off of it when they saw 30 seconds. You could see the call. You could, you could, you could hear their comms through watching them play. Fall back, fall back, there's 30 seconds left. You gotta imagine, if they had not made that fallback, Cloud9 wouldn't have had enough time to, plant, or to even attempt to plant the diffuser. So that was definitely the right strategic call from Mouse. Mm -hmm. And it was just honestly kind of, it seemed almost like sheer dumb luck that Cloud9 managed to make it happen in the end. I mean, C9 loses rounds and wins rounds for a very similar reason that we just saw happen, is that you have Mark solo push on his own. Yeah. Come in through the garage. And that worked out great. It worked out great this time around. But then, I mean, we're also very critical. We can point fingers when Mark tends to do that, or Laxing does that, or Foxy does that, or Retro does it. Because usually the only person on the team that's ever gotten Escort is going to be Goddess. Yeah. And they end up pushing in all on their own, and they just get shredded. And that's exactly what just happened to Fox A there. So part of what hinged upon such a good plan of, of Cloud9 on that first round was this dual hard breacher setup, and they're only going to have one left as their Thermite is the only hard breacher left. And you're exactly right. You know, pushing into the building with no drones ahead of you. No, I mean, you could do that as a Jackal, sure. You can't do it as a Habana. You, you can't even... You shouldn't just have a drone in front of you as a Habana on a basement attack. You should have a drone and at least one warm body pushing in front of you. Habana is the most valuable operator while attacking basement because you need to open up all these drop downs. You need to apply that vertical pressure. And it's the only real way to do so. So now they've just got uh, the option for one drop down and potentially one wall if they should show... So choose. They could also open up two drop downs, but then they won't be able to up the server, open the server wall. Definitely the call of Cloud9, but uh, early disadvantage. You know, uh, you know, I could, I can, I could see why they wouldn't expect Hyper to be where he was, but he was. So good job to Hyper. Great positioning and uh, early advantage, Mouse. Now they're just going to have to use the thermite differently this time around. Probably just use one on the hatch and then try to get the other on the wall downstairs, depending on the way that it's been structured. You can see that it has been reinforced, but no, they they use both directional thermite charges on hatches. Yeah, they decided to adjust their push a little bit here. You could see that they've shifted heavily to the e, uh, west side, and it seems like they want to go for a drop down take. But look at this, Beastly on the pulse has managed to call this rotation out, and he will be giving the information to the rest of his team. Hey, they're taking from the drops. 
Bando gets a C4 kill onto Laxing as Mark is pushing in through the garage once again. But uh, he's going to have to get quite a few more frags if he wants to recover this round. Goddess inside a garage. There you go. Mark is able to do his split push fashion. I think Goddess is just waiting for a call at this point, possibly to come through Foxe. Going to see if there's a Valkyrie camera in there to give them any spots. Smoke's gone down. We'll isolate the site, but there's a C4 from Beastly to be able to tag Retro and eliminate him. That's just Mark and Goddess left as everybody from Mouse just needs to hide for the next 25 seconds. Goddess is going to be zoned out of pushing in through that garage. That's a great toxic babe that gets thrown down, and that gas canister will do good work, but Vertical will do better. It's all up to Mark, who'll just hop right in and no withstand. Not this time. A double kill from Vertical to lock things out, and that'll be Mouse equalizing. Somehow I anticipate this going all the way to the final round again. I'm, I'm, I'm foreseeing that. I, 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 can, I can almost feel it with how, <laughs> how these rounds are going to play out. We're going to see this uh, all the way to the 6-7. But, uh, okay. So first of all, my mistake calling uh, Mark pushing garage. I mistook Goddess for Mark. But um, all in all, the round from Cloud9 there was pretty bad. And why was it bad? Because the Habana died at the very beginning of the round. Yeah. All thanks to Hyper positioning himself on the square skylight stairs and getting that early frag. That it, that's it. That is why that played out the way it played out. Otherwise, Cloud9 very likely would have shifted their attack over to the default push, which is open dropdowns, isolate roamers, push them through server, plant the diffuser. But not so here. So, again, props to Hyper. And uh, nice try. I do have to say, nice try to Cloud9, trying to recover the round by adjusting their take. But also then props to Beastly, calling that rotation out on the pulse. He also managed to get the C4 kill on the player pushing through the vault drop down, which is huge because if he had not done that, then there would have been another angle for the rest of the defenders to have to account for. So, Beastly, Hyper, good job. Yeah, and I mean, Beastly on this pulse is just... He's a he's a commendable player on any team. He used to he used to do primary IGLing for Mouse. I heard you pause on trying to say Beastly. Well, I mean, it's it's it used to be Bextley. No, no, I was there, I was there, I was about to say like Beastly on this pulse. Beastly. Beastly. He is Beastly on the pulse. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> he's Beastly on the pulse. Parker. It's just it the pulse raises his stock as a player so so much, and he yeah. you know you can it's the same with Vandal on the Ying. They're both players that are capable of of doing well on other operators, but you can just see the comfort that they have there. And when you have him on the pulse in particular, it's really valuable. He's going to be trading out, uh, he's going to be keeping the UMP, but trading out the operators. He'll switch onto a castle this time around from above. And they're trying to try to do the typical CEO lockdown strategy involving Amira, mm. involving the castle barricades, kill a lot of time and force C9 to have to wrestle that second floor control away before they can really push on the Teller's archive site. And that's something that uh, is pretty standard. Don't hold on to the top floor. And as we've, we've, we talked about this before the match even started, that's something that Mouse likes to do a lot. Uh, yes. Have those roamers be present. And they actually have had a very light roam presence while defending the basement. Um, Hyper did manage to get that kill offsite, but in, in the early, or early stages of the last round, but it was still just him and he fell back really quickly. But uh, here on the top floor, well, not on the top floor, but you know what I mean? Here defending the top floor is roamers, now you can see how Mouse typically plays. That extension to the detection range of the Jackal going to pay off quite a lot here for Retro as he spots out what appears to be the Legion trying to dodge some bullets upstairs. Cloud9 are clamping down on these Romas really quickly and just like that, they all fall down. Yeah, you've got the you've got the glass up there. You don't want to take that fight. The fact they've been able to move laxing indoors so quickly is really a bit of a surprise and, and that for Mouse is what's most worrying. Vandal's going to take some damage, and so will Vertical, and both of them will have to try to scamper off after getting lit up from above. It sounded like the Jackal and the Zofia both putting in a lot of work from C9. Vandal is trapped right now. He cannot leave the corner of uh, Printer because he is being held in place by Retro right above on the drop down. But uh, he is successfully wasting time. He's going to go for a rotation through the wall. I think he may have used his C4 or someone impacted him out of that wall. So good teamwork there. If it was an impact, good job to Vandal if it was a C4, no it matter was, what. It was a C4, so they have different uh, explosion patterns. So if you see the five sides there, 
Really? Yes. The, I believe it's a pentagon. Mm -hmm. The pentagonal shape. You can see that it's a, a, a C4. So there you go. Look, it looks kind of like a pentagon. There you go. Nice. Just in case uh, people were curious. So anyway, Vandal had had to shoot his way out. But 20 seconds and C9 trying to go in towards the teller's desk here. That's Goddess sprinting in and in vain as Vertical is going to be there to greet her. Laxing and Mark will now be two very important pieces. Laxing could have just possibly saved the round for his team. Two major kills. But he'll get traded out as Vertical gets the final kill that he needed on him. Going around the corner, Mark trying to get it down. But Foxy's last man standing and no. He is on an island. That will be Mouse putting two in a row together. Laxing could have just saved the round for the team by taking out Hyper from below that hatch because you can sail a C4 all the way up through the hatch and catch some of the attackers, but not this time. No, Hyper gets spotted out. Still, a good effort from C9, but an even greater read from Mouse. I gotta commend the roamers for Mouse in that round. Uh, they were being pinched very efficiently by C9 on the top floor, and they all managed to make it out with their lives. And then further, they managed to uh, spread out the Cloud9 attack quite a bit. You could saw, uh, you could see Cloud9 were very distracted with the roamers who pushed over to the open area, most notably Vandal, who used his C4 to stay alive by rotating out of printer. So. Really props to the uh, slippery nature of those roamers for Mouse. Uh, it managed to keep Cloud9 focused on anything but the site. And then once they were scrambling to actually push, it was uh, too little too late. So, top floor, CEO for Mouse as the next site. They have now won two rounds in a row, so they have to go to their third bomb site. They were successful on the basement and, as you just witnessed, the tellers. Not choosing to go to open area, as some teams do. They've also brought uh, Hyper on the Rook, which is something you don't often see. Of course, that's probably going to be Hyper trying to challenge the long angles that are abundant on this top floor as are being highlighted. Good thing that works in favor of Bank here is that it's, uh, <coughs> it's got four sites that are quite easy for you to defend. Yeah, all of the sites are good on this map. I, I think that's that's one great thing about Bank. Bank is I I think an under underappreciated uh, map. So apparently not maybe not reading the patch notes or just trying to make some bullet holes there. But uh, can't break the castle barricades with the glass any longer. It used to take a about I think about twelve bullets thereabouts. So it's still expensive to open a castle barricade. Uh, but now you just can't. You can do damage through it, though, and I believe he did hit Beastly once, so good job there, too laxing. It's quite a bit of damage that's been done to Beastly, almost half of his HP, and now the rest in what is often called banana, because it does happen to have a curved shape similar to a banana, as all those barricades will get taken out, and there you go. That's banana. It is, it is kind of banana-shaped, yeah. A lot of teams do refer to that as banana, yeah, because it looks like a banana. Yeah. So there you have it. That's exactly where Hyper is playing. He's pinned down as the bullets are just sailing over top of his head. And uh, behind the windows, usually you reinforce all those, and they were reinforced. Laxing opened them up. You can't open cast of barricades, but you can open up the normal reinforced windows. Good marks here from C9, and Mark will get the kill. I swear did not mean that for that to happen. The lifeline <laughs> will disrupt... His other opponent, that's Beastly, on the other side of the doorway. The proximity detonation tells Mark he's got somebody on the left or right immediate, but Retro on the drone will be the one to confirm before he starts getting into the action, pushing from the square skylight. This is a good crossfire, as you can see from Cloud9, right down the middle of the site. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful right now, and it means that Mouse will have to just simply go for a reflex test. Mark originally failed, but was able to make it up with a nice bullet spray through the wall and tag Beastly and get him with that bullet pen kill, meaning that Mouse have... Not technically lost control, but they are in a very bad situation as now England with his back turned to Retro will not have any better luck than the rest of his team. Goddess finding Vandal means it's all up to Vertical. The Valkyrie inside a janitor closet. He'll see the Blackbeard break the rifle shield, but Retro will have the final laugh as he crouches down and just shreds through Vertical. That is once again a flawless round from Cloud9. They tie it up. You know, as much as I don't think the MPX needs buff, because it really doesn't, uh, it is just about the worst weapon to use against the Blackbeard shield. Probably... But it's probably it's up there. You know, it's top it's top five easily. So pretty much a well a difficult situation there for Vert and uh, Mouse overall just being collapsed upon. The big thing there for me was you know, remember when Cloud Nine was clearing for uh, clearing the roamers 
on the Teller's defense from Mouse. Well, on that defense, Mouse could have all the players on the top four just fall back. You know, as they started to feel pressure, they didn't need to stay there. They could just return to the site. No problem. Plenty of time wasted. Good job on the run. But when you're defending the top floor, the take from Cloud9 is equally as efficient. They completely circled that site, and they just squeezed. And Mouse had nowhere to run to. And how are you supposed to roam on a top floor defense and still influence such an efficient push from Cloud9? I mean, there's ways, but they're going to be too indirect, and the, the ones that were used by Mouse were shut down. Hyper, in particular, was just in no position to live whatsoever, you know, as he got spotted beneath those barricades. I don't think he was expecting the glass of Laxian to get to the rappel by the front doors and just tear through all those barricades. He ended up getting really pinned down, similar to Vandal last round. Equally, I don't think he was expecting Mark to already be on Banana. Oh, they just, and that, the best part was, is for, for Cloud9, is how fast they were able to just get there. You know, you had two drones on Hyper who, prone, you have limited mobility, really couldn't fight back at all and without changing his stance and being alerted to, or alerting his opponents of his position. Yeah, it's uh, it was a tough straight to find themselves in. Change from Cloud9 as the glass of Laxing will go towards a Blitz. Everything else looks pretty good retro back on the Jackal. As for Mouse, pretty similar flexibility. You got Vert now on the Jaeger instead of the Valkyrie. You've got Vandal playing on the Valkyrie, so they'll trade hands with that Operator. So I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit conflicted about this Cloud9 uh, Operator change. Laxing bringing Blitz instead of Glass because the round that we saw Mouse successfully defend the basement was because Hyper peaked aggressively and took out the Habana. Because the Habana didn't exist, the drop downs were not opened, and Cloud9 didn't have a really good attack strategy. I mean, how do you attack basement of uh, of bank without that Habana? Really, it's difficult. You can do it. It's just it's difficult. Um, but the reason that Cloud9 won their uh, attempt prior uh, try onto this basement was because Laxing just tore through Mouse on that glass. He was able to do so much damage through the uh, the smokes. All that said, though. They are trying to use the Blitz to try uh, to dislodge Hyper from the server stairs. And uh, definitely a good operator to do so, but it's still very dangerous. See, Hyper going to be holding firm. The Gashmat is going to disrupt this push somewhat, but Mark will get Hyper before Vandal able to C4 in response. And Mark gets a double kill. That was a huge salvage for Mark, so massive props to him for that. Yeah, Laxing does not die in vain there, and Mouse will lose a very potent Fragger and Hyper on the server stairs, and then... Also Vandal falling, but Vandal was able to get the C4 off, takes out the shield, that's great. But, yeah, I, I mean, for, for Cloud9, that's definitely a W, and they walk away with it. Now, they won't have too much to go against them as they're able to get this wall quite easily. You know, there's likely going to be a Valkyrie camera, unlikely that it's been fully spotted, unless Goddess can look for it, which is exactly what she's trying to do. Pretty common to have one in there as she'll grab the wall, and you've still got the other Hard Breacher and Fox they available. Like be doing all the work on the hatches as needed. I believe those drop downs have been opened up and they can't apply pressure as a result. Goddess with the diffuser coming to the uh, drop down above A. And there is no defender in close proximity to the A site. Uh, they do have the pulse calling out the push, who does as well have C4, and the gas canisters will be flying all the way from B, doing a lot of damage to Cloud9 as they attempt to push in. The Diffuse Plant is going down on the desk, and the C4 will miss from Beastly. Great positioning here for Cloud9. That makes the retake for Mouse Sports so much more difficult. They also have managed to shut down the main stairs. That's Foxay holding on to that. Goddess going to open up the second server wall, making the retake even more difficult for Mouse. Retro at the bottom of server stairs, just going for some pre-fire, trying to bait, and he will be successful, as well as getting a kill into England after Foxay shuts down Beastly's attempted uh, flank. Vertical now, the last defender, and he's going to be going for a flank as well. He knows he has to confront Foxy on this Habana as he slow peeks the corner. He doesn't really have time to get four kills and a defuse disable, and Foxy will shut him down. Cloud9 take the first half of Bank, and they put themselves up three to two. Excellent job for uh, for Cloud9 there to walk away with this as a. Usually we see a lot of teams can really thrive on defense on this map and in particular, you know, the way that they're able to to slow down the entry. But outside of what the second round when Fox a sprinted right in and got killed immediately, the defense, the roamers really weren't the point of contention for Cloud9. In fact, Mouse's anchor play was what was keeping them alive for the most part. Um, 
Well, I... I would say that uh, the reason that Malice managed to win their defense in the basement was Hyper getting that kill, as you touched on. Um, but the only other round they won was their Teller's defense. And yes. the only reason my, in my mind why they won it was because of how well they played the Roamers upstairs. Because those Roamers managed to waste so much time. And they all got off scot-free. No punishment at all. And then they continued to waste time by falling off not to the site alone, but Vandal pushed into open area and then into printer and then out of printer into kitchen. And there was still people hunting him. It was retro on the Jackal who hunted him for like a solid minute. So I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like the Roamers were a big force for mouse. Uh, the, the other rounds, I mean, that was, uh, that was all C9 winning. So, uh, what Mouse managed to make work was, in my mind, because of, uh, you know, Hyper's positioning. Uh, that is, you know, the getting rid of the Habana was the exclusive reason that they managed. Well, we can't say that. We can't say that with certainty. I think I think taking Fox A as the Habana out was huge. Huge. I think that was massive, and I think that possibly could have been the round right there. Right. And then the other round, of course, that uh, that Mouse got was the Teller's defense because of the Romans on the top floor just doing a great job. But then, as well, the Anchors that you touched on was one that actually came to the site push. Uh, Cloud Nine were coming in through the main lobby, which is a which is a solid strategy, but they didn't they didn't uh, they couldn't make it work. They just could not make it work. So uh, good job, Cloud Nine, for taking the first half. Props to the uh, Malice Roamers again and the and the Inkers as well in the rounds that they managed to get. We were talking about how Cloud Nine were 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 so fast in their in their roam clear, yes. and we're seeing very much the same thing from Mouse Sports. They're already pushing into the building. Yeah, a, a very a very brisk pace for for both teams and I mean it, it's uh, it's it's so difficult to to really track how teams are going to to play on bank because you can see uh, <laughs> just a pre-fire into the uh the clash shield here is hypers trying to uh, I, he, I I don't he, know what he's trying to do. There. He was trying to hit if I'm not mistaken, he was trying to hit the the floor um the ceiling above him above the shield because it'll still detonate then but if you hit the actual shield of clash then it just falls harmlessly to the floor now they're he... trying to they're trying to get clash again and they're not no. they did a little bit of damage to foxy this time uh, that i mean it's not amazingly useful utility the ash charges they they can be used for a lot very versatile however it's not essential that it be used on anything in particular in this take so it makes sense that they're going to use it to try and get the clash the grenade, um, a little bit more useful. Here comes a push, though, from oh! a Jaeger of Mark, and he gets a double <laughs> kill! Clash with great communication. Hyper will finally shut down Fox A on the Clash, but the damage is done. Mark has positioning, and he managed to get two frags while getting away with his life. Fox A definitely feeling good about that one. Hyper looking to pursue, possibly, and Mark is waiting for that push. You know, still Vert on the Jackal, who can... Mark out this Jaeger and uh, force him to rotate. And that's going to be happening right this minute. Here it comes. Now aware of uh, Mark's location, they're going to start trying to collapse. And he will simply fall back to the site. So great job there by Mark. All they lost was Fox A in the process. As you noted, Mark's going to sustain a little bit of damage. Vertical is hot on his trail, trying to figure out exactly where Mark is. Interesting that we've now seen Mira go unbanned both times here on defense. That's very strange. Usually one team would have pulled the trigger on the Mira ban. Nope, Maestro and Echo are far more valuable, I would imagine, this time, even though, it, you know, we can likely see a Maestro get played here. Well, last 15 seconds, and here come the smokes. They're going to cover the push into the site, but not Foley. As Goddess is able to do some damage there. Laxing will also take out Hyper elsewhere. The Diffuse Plant's going down, but a great push from Goddess. will get the kill onto the Jackal, and the secondary does damage before Retro is able to finish off Beastly. Excellent communication there from Cloud9 to get that final kill. You see Retro seeing the call from his teammate. Um, now, I agree with you. I want to touch on what you're talking about with that Mira. Um... It is kind of odd to see nobody ban her out, but it's, it's as I like to say, it's the meta is cyclical, right? So what happens? Mira is a powerful operator that influences the outcome of a round quite a lot. So she gets banned. Then what happens is a response. Teams start practicing without Mira. So they don't need Mira, nor do they need to ban Mira. So she stops getting banned. 
So because of that, she's back to being a powerful operator that is accessible because she's not being banned. You know, it's just it's a roundabout. It's just a circle. And it's going to keep we're going to go in that, I think, a few times as time plays out. But uh, maybe we're in that position right now where, hey, we're back to Mira being played again because she's not getting banned anymore. Clash has also kind of kept Mira from being banned all the time because I know that there are a lot of teams that need to ban Clash. They just do not want to have to deal with her. And then that means that you only have one other ban. Well, if you use it on Mira, that means Maestro, Echo, possibly other operators like Pulse that we've seen banned, you know, quite a bit. Vigil, who's been banned a couple times as well. These are, these are operators who now will remain in that fight, and it's a question of the person you're playing against and the team you're playing against. Is it wiser to possibly give the defenders the advantage that Mira gives overall, or is it wiser to take out one of their strongest operators if you know that they use Maestro very well? You know, if, if they use Mute very well, if they use Pulse very well. And it's like, it's also, yeah, I think it is very much about targeting, too. It's why would you ban Mira against G2 when G2 just doesn't play Mira these days. I mean, they, we saw in, in one of the more recent matches, it's, just, it's, not, it's not something that they've been doing. And of course that's going to change when they feel like the situation's right. It's not something you can predict with them in particular, but it is something that you should look to try to do as a team. Now, in this case, Mira has been playing very well for, uh, for Cloud9 so far in that uh, defense. She's, I think Mira has been a really big factor here for both teams, and I think that's why we've seen the defense being able to, to stick it so long is just, you know, is is just the fact that she brings so much to the defenders. And I mean, there was a time where when we were seeing Mira get banned routinely, and then one of the hard breachers get banned, it was kind of a wash as to whether the attackers or the defenders were walking away with a major advantage. But the way we see it now is that it's very rare for one of the hard breachers to get banned. So having Mira banned in a lot of cases will give a big advantage to the possible attackers depending on what the defender bans end up being. First kill is going to go to Mark though, but he's going to get a little too greedy as he runs into a Claymore and there's Hyper also being eliminated or eliminating Foxy and wow, this is Mouse with a very strong start here giving themselves an advantage. Yeah, great job to Mouse. And uh so much time for them still in the round. Cloud9 just going to try and waste as much as they can. Laxing still on the roam downstairs. Retro playing Archives Goddess in Archives as well, but tasked with holding the A site through that mirror window. Again, the utility showing how useful it can be. However, Mouse has control of the top floor, and if they read that the mirror window is there, they will get the kill on Goddess, who is staying on the mirror window despite being pressured from above. Cut off rotation here, and Retro will go down to Hyper as well. Just laxing in the one versus four, but a nice headshot on Hyper. Sees Beastly as well, but chooses to fall back. Probably the right call in this situation as the Diffuse Plant is going down. Perfectly placed C4, but it misses. Laxing doesn't get the kill as the rotation happens from his opponent. A nice headshot though, and he almost gets the follow-up onto England. Damage done, and the second shot will land. It's all up to Beastly, the one versus one, but Laxing is on so little HP. And there's still so much time for the Capitao. He doesn't need to rush this. But his teammates, T. Laxing's teammates, that is, are calling out La Beastly's position. The Valkyrie camp's currently in play heavily here. Beastly's checking the wrong corners. Laxing might get the lucky shot, and he does, but oh no! Beastly with the flick! The limited HP not going to matter as Laxing dies to a headshot, and Mouse will take the round. An excellent try to Laxing. But uh, it just wasn't enough. <laughs> and a flick as the call came out. And the one thing that Beastly had working in his favor that he could have used if he possibly was a, a little bit less pressed for time, he had all the utility in his crossbow. He had both asphyxiating bolts and both of the smoke bolts available. He could have used those to try and flush out if, if he thought, hey, maybe Laxing is playing down by the filing cabinets inside of Tellers. Maybe he is hugging that tight angle where Laxing ended up being. You can use both of your two asphyxiating bolts there. Laxing was on so low HP, it's just one tick of health and he's dead. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I gotta say, it was. It, I think it was the right call, though, for, for Beastly just to play it by the gun. I mean, clearly the reason he was doing that is uh, his, his teammates were saying, hey, Laxing's on, low on HP. You know, you don't need to get fancy with it. Just shoot him. Shoot him once and you'll win it. 
And that's why the flick when he was, you know, when BC was going for the left corner there was just so wild. Because he knew, I need to land one shot and then I'll manage to win it. And he did just that. So, top floor defense for Cloud9 after unsuccessfully holding the tellers. They're going to bring a uh, good lineup for this site. No ACOGs, uh, but uh, they have brought a good amount of utility in that Mira and the, the Castle Barricades will help quite a lot on this top floor. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you mentioned the fact that you thought this was going to go all the way. I, I had a feeling that if, if that match, in, or if that round in particular, had have gone, you know, in, in favor of uh, of C9, that we would have seen this yeah. come to a pretty quick quick end. I, I don't... We're on the same page there. I, I don't know if I could have seen Mouse possibly, you know, be able to, to fire up a comeback when they're down 5-2, but 4-3 is a whole different ballgame for them. They're, you know, they're, they're within striking distance of a tie. I gotta say though, despite uh, Cloud9 losing that round and Laxing not not getting the uh, the clutch, I think that's the sort of clutch that reinvigorates you as a whole team. That uh, you you see your teammate capable of such a feat, and you think to yourself, "Wow, I'm lucky to be here." And uh, I think uh, despite losing that round, Cloud9 are gonna be very happy. I agree. So Laxing looking to challenge Vandal, who's repelling on the lobby windows. He has actually done quite a lot of damage to Vandal, so... But it's been a, it's been a back and forth. Laxing also taking some damage. And the pressure's being applied to Laxing from multiple angles. This vertical is starting to push his way up the main lobby stairs. Laxing will get aggressive, not go for the shot, though, and thus not land it. Now, you can see that Retro is actually covering Laxing. An excellent, excellent angle play there for Retro on the smoke. Hyper, though, will shut him down. So the second peak for the attacker successful. But Mark there, again, the support here for Cloud9 is crazy. They are holding on to Badan Banana like it's their last meal. Vandal setting up the nade, and it will miss entirely. But Foxe also getting another kill. England goes down. That's the roamer downstairs. Mouse Sports trying to take this main lobby, and they will be hopefully unsuccessful. Cloud9, a great lockout. I think it's it's interesting that you noted that there's no ACOG on uh, on defense here. Usually we don't we won't mention every single site whether an ACOG gets brought or not. Yeah. It... But an ACOG on CEO upstairs is so commonplace now that it's worth mentioning if it doesn't show up. You know, we see teams, G2, for example, SK, for example, they'll bring a Dock or a Rook and they'll stick them up at the top of the spiral stairs and use them to take long-range engagements. Vandal is going to eliminate Laxing, but he's on very low HP. He's got Beastly there, who's full health. Still very winnable for Cloud9, especially with the utility that the Capitao has available. But Fox A, inside a Skylight Stairwell. He's in a good position to possibly pounce upon Mouse if they're not really looking. Beastly will go to drone, sees the mirror window, but doesn't bother, or Vandal sees the mirror window, but doesn't bother to eject it. That would actually be a major boon to Cloud9, who, as I mentioned, have Fox A playing by Skylight Stairwell. Goddess with that vector will be able to chew through anybody, doesn't need to do too much. Smoke will go down, sails out of C4, needs to not hit her teammate in the process. Mark, very, very close to getting blown wide open, but the only thing that will get blown open is this lead. As we move to match point, Mark manages to evade the C4 from Goddess, and it is now 5-3, Cloud9. So, Cloud9 match point, series point. I was expecting this to go all the way. It could still, but Mouse are going to have to win two in a row to make this happen. And yeah, uh, you, you were talking about the, uh, the ACOGs. Do you want to finish that thought? Once, once I'm done coughing. <laughs> uh, if feeling okay. all right, I'm, Parker. I'm very, I'm very, very dreadfully under the weather. Yeah. So I apologize. It happens. I apologize if anybody's heard any coughing or sneezing or anything like that. I also can't speak for more than like ten seconds without needing to take a really deep breath. Life is life is rough, man. But uh, you make it through. I, I make it work. I went to Scotland last weekend, and I feel like a little bit of the Scottish uh, flu came back with me. So it's unfortunate. So I get sick. Yeah, I mean, when you travel as much as we do on planes, it's really a wonder that we don't actually get them sick more than we do. So, yeah. Anywho, um, the a the ACOG. The whole reason behind the ACOG <laughs> is that I mean, it's you're going to see a lot of anchors with the ACOGs come out, especially on CEO. You end up in a in a position where you're trying to guard the entire lobby area on defense. Mm. You're basically playing full court press 
And you're also trying to make sure that anybody on top of parking garage or anybody that's on repel by the big windows or even by the windows by the front doors of bank can't just do that without any issue from the defenders. That's why we see a dock. That's why we see a rook play those ways. We've seen maestros be able to do that too, but the biggest problem there is that if maestro dies, you lose his, his evil eyes, whereas losing a rook is, is not the end of the world, providing you've already used both of his impact grenades as well as his, uh, his armor plates. I absolutely agree. On that top floor, I mean, the angle play is just so important with those uh, incogs. But Cloud9 managed to make it work for them, or for themselves regardless. They didn't even need one. You know, I was, I was, I was kind of reminiscing when we saw, we were actually talking about that earlier in the round, because it was, in the past, they would have had three ACOGs. Yep. They had a, a Smoke, a Bandit, and a Jaeger. And it's just so odd to think about how the game has changed. Very, very in the past there, though. But Sure, sure. I mean, I, I don't think you can say Jaeger ACOG without a significant portion of people just blacking out in anger. So, I mean, it's... It's it's one of those it's just one of those things where uh, it's one of those things where people are, are obviously still a little uh, touchy on the uh, on the on the subject there. But anywho, one minute in and Mouse have managed to get to the bottom of these server stairs. They're confronted by a castle barricade. Good thing that Hyper happens to have a breaching round in his hands to uh, to blow it to just completely blow it open. You can see that uh, Cloud Nine are just holding on to the uh, server. But doing their best to deny this push from Mouse Sports. Interesting play from Mark. He's probably just trying to bait for his teammates. That's the only thing I can imagine is happening here. But the thing is, is by baiting for his teammate, he has now trapped himself. Potentially, if there's an attacker above him, and there seems to be one, yes, in fact, waiting for him to rotate. Foxy, though, can go for the pre-fire and salvage this, or Vandal can just miss his shots. And that seems to be the one that happened. You can see those two defenders inside a server are actually trapped by you know their own plays. They have castled themselves in here. Mouse are putting a lot of emphasis on those main stairs, trying to push down and uh, look for some kills. They haven't been able to get any, though, just yet. As we come to the last minute, it's been an action-packed first two. Yeah, and I mean, at the same time, we haven't really seen much of Mouse's strategy bear any real fruit, you know? Uh, they've, been, they've been quite successfully thwarted. But now look at this, a Legion Mine's gonna get tossed right up. Goddess takes out Vandal. You've also got Mark on the roam. And Laxing will use both of his goo mines to give the position away. He's gonna get flashed and he'll move out of elevator. And there we go towards the main stairs. Look at that, Laxing with one, can't go for a second, tries for it, but misses. It's Retro who will end up getting it. Hyper gets one, Beastly gets one. And what was looking to be a lockout from Cloud9 will not be the case. Mark's position will be given away by the Hibana. Fox A drops to take out Beastly, and it's all just up to Hyper. Oh, get one. This is very winnable. We're on match point. Hyper doesn't hold that diffuser, though, and he'll be getting pinged away. It's all up to Fox A, and he'll finish it. Seal the deal, Cloud9. 2 nothing over Mouse. What a clutch from Fox A and Cloud9 as a whole. Great try from Mouse, but it's just not to be. We didn't get to go all the way this time but it was certainly a hard-fought 6-3. So that's it for Mouse C9. Uh, ultimately, an, an excellent play here, and I think it really did play into what we were talking about before the match started, which is that Bank was far more of a... How can I, how can I say this? Far more uh, certain than, than Oregon. So congratulations to Cloud9. They'll score off against Obey next week. And uh, as for Mouse... Their journey has come to an end in this round of the U.S. Nationals. Now, keep in mind, there are still the two wild card spots, as well as another two that need to qualify 